Hello everyone, my name is Dakoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're going to be building a rotor factory. Rotors are one of the essential early game components. They're used as a uh, an ingredient for a number of different buildings and they're also part of the space elevator parts that we'll use to unlock tiers 3 and 4. Now rotors are unlocked as part of the part assembly milestone in tier 2, which also gives you the assembler which we need to mass produce them. If we take a look at the rotor recipe, we can see that to craft four rotors per minute, that's one assembler running at 100% speed, we'll take 20 iron rods per minute, which is 20 iron ingots per minute, and 100 screws per minute, which is 25 iron ingots per minute. So we're gonna need a total of 45 iron ingots per minute. Now four rotors per minute doesn't sound like very many, but it's actually plenty for most gameplay purposes. For example, it takes four rotors to build an assembler, but but you rarely need to build more than one assembler per minute. And given that the scale of the game could take dozens or hundreds of hours to complete, we will have plenty of rotors from just this one factory. Now we may want to integrate additional production into other factories later for things like motors, but as far as giving us a stockpile, as well as for giving us the first set of space elevator components, this should be plenty. Now one additional thing we're gonna have to keep in mind as we build this factory is that this recipe requires 100 screws per minute. That means we're gonna have to unlock the logistics mark two milestone in order to unlock the Mark II belts. The Mark I belts can only move 60 items per minute, which means it couldn't possibly provide for this recipe at full efficiency. But the Mark II belts double that to 120 and should be fine for us. So let's pop on over and send that milestone away and take a look at a design for our factory. Now, in addition to the assembler to produce the rotors themselves, we're also gonna need some constructors to produce the iron rods and the screws. One constructor can produce 15 iron rods per minute as we need a total of 20, we'll use two constructors to make iron rods. For screws, we need a total of 100 per minute and using the default recipe, that would take three constructors to turn them from iron rods and then you would need two more to produce the iron rods to supply them for a total of five for the screws using the default recipe. Now we've unlocked the cast screw alternate recipe, which greatly simplifies this and allows us to do this with just two constructors. So that's how we're gonna design this factory, but I will briefly show during the build process a layout for a factory build that uses the default recipe, in case you haven't found that alternate in your playthrough. Although I will say it is worth seeking those hard drives in order to find those early alternate recipes early on in the game. Now, in order to supply the iron to our factory, we're gonna go ahead and rely on the mining and smelting array that we set up for a reinforced iron plate factory. Here in the Northern Forest, we're mining 120 iron ore per minute, and we're smelting that in four smelters, which means once we upgrade these belts, we'll be able to move 120 iron across to our manufacturing area over on the other side of the factory. Now, half of that 60 iron per minute is going into our reinforced iron plate factory, but we'll be able to send the other half across to provide for our rotor factory. Let's get into the build.
right? And that is a rotor factory all complete. Actually, two rotor factories all complete. Fortunately, they're fairly simple. So let's go through them real quick. Uh, over here, we have uh, just one assembler making rotors at 100% speed, very simple. And that is being provided with iron rods by two constructors, which are each tuned, uh, I believe, to 66.67% uh, clock speed. That's 10, 10 items per minute in each of these two constructors. Because we're using the cast screw recipe in this particular half of the factory, uh, these just run at 100% of capacity because that will give us the 100 screws we need from the two constructors. Over here on the other half of the factory, this is for if you don't have any of the alternate recipes unlocked and we have the same assembler at 100% speed. Uh, like with the other one, we have two constructors producing iron rods at 66.667% clock speed. Uh, so those are both doing that. And then we have two more constructors over here also making iron rods. These ones are running at 83.3 repeating uh, in order to make 25 iron rods per minute, which are then being sent into three more constructors which will produce the 100 we need. So we have two of these constructors set to produce 33 per minute. Uh, and then I think this one's also 33, yeah. And then uh, the third constructor is 34 per minute. So that gives us a total of 100 screws per minute going into our assembler. Now we don't need two factories producing rotors, uh, but I did wanna showcase the build without the alternate recipes because especially this early in the game, if you've had a little bit of bad luck with your hard drives or if you haven't had a chance to find them, it's very possible you won't have those alternate recipes just yet. At some point, it does become worth going exploring and getting all the hard drives and all the recipes that you're gonna want. But we may end up taking this particular factory and siphoning the output from this instead of storing it in just sending it directly into an awesome sink for some tickets or something like that. Or we may tear it down to, to save on power or, or something, I don't know. The last thing I want to talk about today before we wrap up is how I do my belt logistics. In particular, I'm a big fan of the manifold style of belts. I haven't actually in in a very long time of playing this game found a reason where manifolds aren't, in my opinion, the better solution for how to do it. And the idea is basically this. We're, we're taking 60 iron ingots out of these two smelters and splitting them evenly into four constructors. And, and I see a lot of questions about hey, is this really the most efficient way to do that? Because isn't, aren't 30 of those ingots going into that first constructor? And the answer is yes, sort of. This splitter will divide the 60 ingots evenly between the two output belts. And so 30 are going into that constructor and 30 are being passed along. However, once that constructor fills up, once there's 100 iron ingots sitting in the hopper of that constructor, it won't take any more than it can use. So it'll only consume as much as the, the machine can, can make use of. And uh, the splitter is smart enough to know that if it can't send any more iron ingots down that belt to send them along. So after just a few minutes, this constructor stops pulling more than more ingots than it can use. That, that 30 slows down to, uh, I, th I think, 10 in this case. And so there are 10 going there, and that means that all 50 that remain are being passed along. And the same thing will happen there, that it'll split 25 and 25. But again, that constructor is only using 10. So after about six and a half minutes, those, those 15 extra ingots per minute that are going into that constructor will fill that hopper and then it'll backlog. And those 15 extras will then be passed on along to the next one. And this can be repeated indefinitely. Now, I like manifolds over load balancers for a couple of reasons. The first one being is that it is smaller and cleaner. It fits nicely, it expands well to almost any size grid. So, so for example, if you are using a load balancer, the number of machines you're gonna use is going to scale exponentially, whereas with a manifold system, it scales linearly, which is at a lower rate. Uh, the result is that you just end up using less space, less materials uh, for your belts, and that to me looks nicer and works better. And the second reason is that it's just easier, especially if you have irregular numbers of inputs and outputs. So imagine instead of having, you know, two smelters going into four constructors that we had five smelters going into nine constructors with a manifold that looks very much the same. We just have five, five smelters in a row on a single belt and nine constructors in a row on a single belt. And it, it works well. Whereas with a load balancer, that would be a much larger system. And if we needed to change that to go some from say, five to nine to six to 11, that would require tearing down the entire load balancer and reconstructing it. Whereas with the uh, the manifold, you just tack an additional machine on the end or, or however many you need. And so it's very simple. Anyways, I hope that I've explained that well. If, if you guys have any questions about manifolds and load balancers, leave comments. And if I see enough interest, then maybe I'll do a guide video on it. And that's gonna do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video uh, enjoyable or helpful. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Dakoba and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.